All right, so do you want to know what to expect on this exam, this New York State Chemistry Regents exam? Let me go through it. Okay, you're going to have a lot to kind of spread around your desk. You're going to have an exam booklet. This is not the current one. I haven't seen that yet, obviously. Then you're going to have an answer booklet, so printed in this color paper. Okay, you're going to have a bubble sheet that you're going to put the multiple choice answers on. You're going to have access to a calculator, not graphing. And then you're going to have a new blank copy of reference table. And then you're going to get three hours unless you have accommodations with extra time. So you have to write in pen uh, graphs or tables or a diagram or something like that can be done in pencil. Again, not a graphing calculator, a scientific calculator. All right, you can write on the reference table. You can cross stuff out. You can make marks. You can write on the exam. But none of that gets graded. The only thing that's going to get graded is your bubble sheet with your multiple choice questions and then this answer booklet right here, this one, where you wrote your answers in. Okay. On the back of the bubble sheet, there's um, over on the bottom of the bubble sheet, there's a sign that says, you know, I do so declare. You have to sign that, okay, before turning in your exam. The structure is going to be 85 total points. That's typically 85 questions. All right. So 50 multiple choice and 35 constructed response questions. So what do you need to pass? So here's just a general outline. This is from the January 2023 exam. And you can see that in order to get a 65, right, you needed 50 points. Okay, but you can see there's a lot of doubling up um, before and after that passing grade. Okay, so just be aware, it's typically around 50. It might be a little bit above or potentially a little bit below, but on average, you can count on you need 50 out of 85 points to pass. Now, that's not really a curve because that's almost basically passing. It's just a little bit of a curve, okay? The structure, part A is 30 multiple choice questions. And these are the simpler multiple choice questions. It shouldn't be really multi-step. Some is just information flow from your head, but it might be a reference table question. In general, it follows the order of the curriculum. So from like atomic theory through nuclear chemistry. Uh, for B1, uh, it's 20 multiple choice questions. These are the harder multiple choice questions, a lot more applied knowledge, uh, maybe solving a problem, multi-steps. You may need multiple reference tables. And again, this sort of follows the order of the curriculum. So again, from atomic theory through nuclear chemistry. So we kind of restart again through this second set of multiple choice. You should, if you want to pass this exam, which you're taking it by, you not want to pass, right? Aim for 35 to 40 multiple choice questions. So 35 multiple choice questions put you well on track to pass this exam. 40 multiple choice questions correct, put you well on track to earning mastery, okay? So aim in that range. Obviously you can do better, people get all of them correct. So that should be the base. If you're taking a practice exam, aim for 35 to 40 minimum, multiple choice questions correct. And then once we get past multiple choice, we're on constructed response. So here you have to write your answers in this answer booklet. Okay. So right in here. Okay. And part B2 is going to be 15 points. And typically that's 15 questions. If a question is worth more than one point, it's going to be identified. So you can see right here after each individual question, it says one point. If it wasn't, if it said two, it's going to identify which part is one point and which part is another point, okay? But in general, it's gonna be 20, it's gonna be 15 questions here, 15 points. And these are the easier ones. So again, less involved. So there may be a diagram, a chart, a graph, okay? Um, but it's not typically long reading, all right? Fairly straightforward. And then we have part C. These are the longer uh, constructed response questions, meaning it's most likely a reading or a reading and a diagram. It's a little bit more involved. These are technically the harder ones, but they're really not that much harder, okay? If you know the content, 
you can get it. And a lot of times they give you so much information in the question um, and in the reading to kind of support you in your answer. All right, so some little tips. Take your time. Don't leave blanks. Check your work. Make sure you didn't miss a question. Does your answer make sense, right? Did you miss a word in the question? Underline or highlight or outline important details. Restate the question in your own words. I do this all the time. I read the question and then I say, okay, the question is asking for what standard pressure is. Okay, I know that standard pressure is uh, one atmosphere and 101.3 kPa, or I know I can find standard pressure on table A, so let's look it up. Now when you look at the answers, you already have an idea of what you should be looking for. Once you start reading the answers, sometimes it can get a little confusing. You can answer the easy questions first. There is no rule that says how you have to do this exam. Want to start with Part C? Beautiful. Go ahead. Want to do five written choice, like written constructive response questions, and then go back and do some multiple choice and zigzag? Go ahead. Do what you want. You can do this exam however you want to. You have three hours. Use it as you see fit. Prepare. So sleep well eat some breakfast, your brain needs glucose to function, give it some energy, okay? Only change an answer once you've answered a question, only change an answer if you're sure you made a mistake, okay? Otherwise, trust yourself. Uh, you can eliminate answer choices. Many questions on this exam can be brought down to a 50-50, and even if you aren't sure at that point, 50-50 is pretty good odds, right? So cross out any answers. Remember, you can write all over the test, cross out answers that you know are wrong. If you're stuck, come back, circle it. Don't spend 15 minutes struggling on one question. Skip it, go on, come back to it. Read, read, read. But in part B2 and C, I'm going to suggest skip the reading, go to the question. Why? Literally most of the time you don't even need the reading. So sometimes it has way extra information and confuses you. So read the question and then go back to the reading if you need it. Use context clues to figure out um, words you don't know. Also, when you see like vapor pressure, like, oh my gosh, table H, turn to table H. If it's talking about heat of reaction, oh my goodness, table I, right? So start going where you think you need to be, all right? Now we're gonna look at a few sample questions, all right? So again, last bit before we do that, prepare, study. You should be ready for this. Okay, so here's a straightforward reference table question. Atoms of which element in group 15 have the greatest electronegativity? So table S literally lists electronegativity. Find each element, look it up. Here's my suggestion. Write the electronegativity value here. Stop trying to hold it in your head. Use the space you have. When you do that, so you could try and answer this question right now. You can pause it, but this is the correct answer. Okay, eliminating wrong answers is a crucial part of this exam. So you can see that, especially when questions like this, where you can see energy released and energy absorbed and bond broken and bond formed. So figure out what is easy to answer right away. Since it doesn't have energy in this equation, let's figure out if bonds are being broken or formed. So we look and we start where they're stuck together and on this side, they're broken apart. So obviously what is happening Bonds are broken. So that means I can eliminate these two answers. And that leaves me with a 50 50 chance. Okay. And what you need to remember, right? So we just cross those out. What you need to remember is this breaking things need energy. So if I had this pen, I want to break it. I need to put energy in to do that. So every time you break a bond, you have to absorb energy. You got to put it in. So that means that has to be the right answer. All right. This is a good, like one of these things is not like the others option where it says which of the, which process is a chemical change. That means all the rest are physical. So if you find the physical, what's left? The chemical change, okay? Uh, another easy reference table question. It doesn't have to be a hard reference table question uh, for part uh, B2 especially. It says state the number of electrons in an atom of Li7, literally three. You just look right here at the atomic number, right? Because it says atom, and when it's an atom, the number of protons right here equals the number of electrons. 
Also, you could add up the numbers in the electron configuration, but it's literally this number, okay? All right, when it says compare the energy of an electron, so compare, what does that mean? There are three types of answers. Either they're the same, one is greater, or one is less. So, easy. That's only three possible answers, okay? So, an electron in the first shell of a lithium atom to an electron in the second shell. So then you just decide which one is greater, what, which one has more energy. So you should know that NL energy of an electron in the second shell is greater than the energy of an electron in the first shell. Or you could have said an electron in the first shell has less energy. Okay, a frequent question, knowing how to calculate average atomic mass, okay? So again, we have to convert the percent um, into a decimal. So we're gonna divide by 100 and then our decimal is here, right? Then I'm gonna multiply these numbers together. So 6.015 times this, get an answer, multiply those two numbers and then add up those two answers. And I should get a number that is in between these two numbers, but closer to the one that is more abundant. That means my answer should basically be seven when I get an answer, it should be close to seven, okay? So you set it up like this. It says just show a numerical setup. You don't have to calculate it. Sometimes you have to calculate it. Here you don't, you just have to be able to set it up. That's it, you got this, you can do it.